Hello and welcome to week 26 of Bits and Bobs, where we outline this week's best mods. First up today is the Dragon Lord Greatsword. The mod adds a custom Dragon Lord Greatsword to the game, a type of sword used by warlords during the Dragon War. The Greatsword shares its stats with the other Dragonbone weapons that are in the Dawnguard DLC, but it definitely stands out compared to them in aesthetics. The mod creator has made the mod work without requiring Dawnguard, so any of you who wanted to try out the Dragonbone weapons but haven't been able to get Dawnguard, this is an alternative method. You'll only be able to find this weapon on the Steam Workshop, and the mod creator has said that nobody is allowed to upload it to anywhere except there, so it looks like this will be a Workshop exclusive mod, which is a rare thing to find. We love how the blade looks and it definitely fits in with Vanilla Skyrim, but it also has its own unique look that makes it a great weapon mod overall. And for today's second mod we have Vampiric Thirst, Dawnguard Edition. Vampiric Thirst is a complete overhaul of the vampire system that was in the vanilla game. It's been written completely from scratch to give vampires a more challenging approach, as well as to generally increase the amount of fun you'll have while playing as a vampire. And even though we're covering the Dawnguard edition, the original is very similar, so if you don't have Dawnguard then you can still enjoy most of the new features. As a base, the mod makes some changes to the vampire abilities and powers, which affects both you and the vampire NPCs. There's a whole list of changes, from making you immune to poison and disease, letting you breathe underwater, and making you strong against certain types of magic, and more. There's also some extra weaknesses, like burning in the sunlight, having no natural health regeneration, being vulnerable to silver, and so on. The powers have been broken down into different categories. Examples are mesmerism, which includes spells that will manipulate the enemy, reflexes, which increases your senses as a vampire, blood magic, which drains the life force of your enemy, and more. There's actually 26 different perks and powers that can be unlocked as you advance as a vampire. To unlock the spells you need to gain XP by feeding and using your powers. Once you gain enough XP you'll gain a skill point which can then be used to unlock a new power. The mod also integrates a new feeding, blood and hunger system. You need to feed only the blood or a life force to decrease your hunger, but it's a little bit more in depth than that. Feeding has been made to be as natural and open as possible, and by that I mean you have a variety of ways you can feed. You can invade your prey's home and feast while they sleep. You can charm your prey into getting close enough for a quick bite. You can use your mesmerism powers which I mentioned earlier to make them more compliant. And the list goes on. It's been made for every thinkable approach. Aggressive, stealth, social, magical. You can feed using them all. As a young vampire, the blood you obtain at the start will have to do. But as you level up and gain experience, you'll start to notice different flavours of blood. And you'll actually develop a favoured type of blood. This is done with a flavour system, which gives you bonuses for eating the types of blood which you like the taste of, and debuffs for the types of blood which you gain a distaste, so remember to feast on a variety of different victims. Hunger has been broken down into 6 different stages. While being at the most full, you'll actually be able to go out during the day without your skin sizzling, but as you start to get more hungry, you'll start to lose control bit by bit, and the people around you will start to notice your weird behaviour, so be sure to stay well fed. Feeding, blood and hunger all change and grow with you as you grow as a vampire. And you do actually grow, you start off as a fledgling and end up as a bloodkin, which takes about 9 in-game months. As you grow, your abilities and powers become stronger, you'll also be able to control your bloodthirst better than before. The mod has been made to be as compatible as possible, working with a variety of other types of vampire mods, as well as custom races. And remember there's a whole bunch of other smaller details and features the mod adds, so remember to give the mod page a read to fully understand how to use the mod in-game. But once you get the hang of things, it's definitely a great improvement, and we're glad we finally got around to reviewing it. Next up today is Cabin in the Woods, a player home by Counter Cruel that's a compilation of all of his previous work, like Gleaming Falls and Winter's Lodge. The cabin takes bits and pieces from some of the mod creator's previous mods and puts them all together in a quiet area between Whiterun and Windhelm, close to Cradle Crush Rock. If you installed Candle Pond Ranch from the last video, these two houses are in the same place, so uninstall that first if you want to try out this new one. Everything you see in the area, from trees to rocks and even the insects have been hand placed by the mod creator to give you the best viewing experience possible. The house includes several features that you'd usually expect to see in a player home mod, like a forge, grindstone and several storage chests. You'll find all of the features either inside the cabin which is quite small or outside which is much larger. Throughout the area you'll notice small details that are easy to overlook, but if you pay close attention you'll really see that a lot of time and effort has gone into making this home perfect. This player home utilises outside space as much as it does inside, and we think it's great because nobody wants to spend all of their time inside. And now we have something we don't see too often, a new horse mount. To get your hands on the new mounting game you'll need to find a spell book on Alvor's workbench in Riverwood. Use it and then you'll find the new spell in your powers menu. Named Thunderdash, he has the power of lightning by his side. He's a black and blue themed horse, equipped with horse armour you might have seen from another horse armour's mod. Looking into his eyes, you can see the power of lightning within, granting him greater agility and stamina. 
and while he's summoned he can't be killed, even by fall damage, and he's also been trained to follow you. Overall he makes for a very well made horse mount, and it isn't the author's first. In fact, he's made plenty, so if you like what you see then remember to check out the author's workshop page on Steam. Better Daedric Blades does exactly what the name implies. It improves the Daedric Dagger, Sword and Greatsword. The mod aims to give the new blades a more alien and sinister look, closer to what they used to look like in Oblivion and Morrowind. The mod creator achieves the new look by adding new textures to the blade that have a more chaotic pattern. It keeps the same main overall theme of the Daedric weapons, like the red and black colour scheme, but we think the new blades definitely look more evil. We've seen a lot of mods that aim to bring back some of the weapons or armour sets that were featured in previous Elder Scrolls games, so there's definitely a market for people who want to see things being brought into Skyrim, and we think this mod would be perfect for anyone who loved the look of the older blades. And now we have yet another sword added to the Lilith Tools collection. The author was revamping the older Reaver sword when he got a little carried away with a new look, and decided to make a new sword entirely. The Slayer can be crafted at any forge under the Daedric category, costing quite a bit with a mixture of ebony ingots, Daedra hearts, vampire dusts and leather strips. You also get to choose between 6 different versions of the Slayer, with 3 one-handed versions and 3 two-handed versions. The one-handed versions include the standard, the bigger and then the huge, and the two-handed versions include the two-handed axe, the greatsword and the spear. The different versions of the swords also share the same stats, so it really comes down to which one you like to look at and fight with. This is the ninth sword added to the collection, and it fits in well with all the others, so if you like those then you'll also probably like this too. And finally for today we'll be leaving you with something that isn't really a mod, but we thought it deserved to be mentioned as it's something we're sure a lot of you will like. Skyrim Concept Art Wallpapers HD has a total of 11 new wallpapers that are all based around Skyrim. The wallpapers feature a wide variety of things ranging from ships to dragons and even old giants smoking. All of the images are incredibly high detailed and we can honestly say that they feature some of the best content we've ever seen. Everything with all of the images is perfect, from the lighting to the contrast and even though it's not a mod it can be downloaded via the Nexus. And it's a great way to end today's episode. 